your host Chris and me Jay and this is On The Ball episode 7 um, which is going to be the last episode of probably. 2015 yeah so this is your Christmas episode and since we really really care about you we went to absolutely no effort to like dress up or do anything Christmassy you've had a shave I've had a shave and a haircut I was looking on this and it's yeah. Christmas you have to get a haircut got time off quite a lot did mummy yeah, yeah mother mummy Finnegan why I tell you things is beyond me but yes the internet is to know so as always guys, thanks for asking questions, hope you're enjoying these. If you're getting in some Christmas hobby time, you've got too much turkey and you're painting the shiny new toys that you've got, feel free to stick this on and enjoy while you paint. So we'll start with the first question, do you want to take this one? I will, yes. Um, bring back Jamie, this is from GBH, GBA, GBHL Podcast, mm -hmm. Jamie. Um, I actually received, just before we get to the question, I received my latest order from Steamforge. And, Hang on, he's broken. And on the actual, um, on the parcel address, someone had put hashtag bring back JV. I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have that. Anyway, what's the question? I've had a big picture of a penis, which you'll see then. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I did see that. I did see that. He's um, referring to the Messengers Guild that we talked about last week, and he said that surely, as the Steamforge news host, he'd be the captain. Nah. And he hasn't asked a question. So. I mean, Team Forge got battered by GBI last yeah, time. You can't I mean, have a captain. That's when you, when you can step up to the plate, like, you're the best of the worst. Do you know what I mean? Because they lost, but he's the best of the losers. Yeah. But when you step up to the plate, we'll, we'll, at the moment, we'll reside you between, like, walk boy and mascot. Yeah. And, and put a bit more effort in and we'll see if you can knock your other right into. No, joking aside, cheers, Jamie, and thanks for doing the Q&A with us. It's uh, been good for Jamie is coming on the 28th. Cool. For anyone watching, I don't know how soon before that it'll be coming out on the 28th, we've got a bit of a free day at the Northwest Gaming Centre where we're all going to get there, play some Guild Ball. We've got John Cannon for all our efforts coming. Um, we've got <laughs> all Manchester Lab. Clay Galbath and. Yeah, Gilbert absolutely. Lee. Henry and Eleanor are coming. Is Cheers John Cannon Quinn. actually coming? Is he confirmed? I think it looks that way now, yeah. So there'll be a good 20, 25 of us guys, so if you're free, uh, come on down. Yeah, I mean, play other systems as well. We're hoping to have a bit of a day where we can all meet each other and have a bit of a laugh and just celebrate Christmas together. And Chris is bringing the mince pies for everyone. Homemade. So anyway, homemade. cheers to the question. Um, the next question is from Winner All Cost Steve Newman. And he says, answer our questions put on the last episode. Can I copy them across here? No. If he's not going to copy them across, are no, we going to answer them? No. 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 They were probably copy anyway. <laughs> so um, I'll do the next one since that was uh, quite a short one. Joking aside, Steve, please pose them across. We do like answering your questions. So, Trent Dennison, and he says, Why don't more people play Avarice and Greed? Thank you. That man's a genius. Why don't they? Yeah, why don't, well, why don't you play Avarice and Greed? Why don't more people play Avarice and Greed? <sighs> yeah. I, I think that um, they, they're not uh, modelling into themselves. They're not like an out-and-out -out VP scoring model. Yes. So it's not as obvious. Mm. What are you going to get out of them? The, the, the buffs that they do give the Leicester team singled out on one hit is amazing, and just the link, the double activation or the extra activation, mm. making seven models. Yeah, I mean, huge. that's exactly it. They, they, they don't scream, this is what I do. They're not like Fangtooth, who's a knockdown machine with gluttonous mass and things like that. But the key one you've just mentioned is the momentous singled out on Avarice for one is amazing. And, and Jamie Giblin has recently started playing with, stop touching my phone, you break it. Jamie Giblin has started playing with Brewers, and like he, he pointed out as well, like he may actually start using Avarice and Green now because singling out two or three models followed by like a push Brewers doing the what they do, yeah, Grim. Um, greed is a little machine. It, the thing with Greed is I take Avarice and Greed for Avarice because Greed can every now and then pull off something amazing, but it's so situational. But other than that, they're also, in my opinion, the coolest model in the range. Yeah, I think they're a good model. I think, uh, to answer your question as well, why don't we see them more? It's probably because just uh, the fact that they're actually seen as Union, mm. so they've got another 10 or 11 models in the Union lineup. You if they were pure guild in a different guild, I think you'd see them a lot more. Mm. And I think they're often overlooked in other guilds because a lot of people like to play pure guild and obviously we don't really fit in like trying to put them in fishermen or trying to put them in another team. Yeah. I think yeah, brewers may actually be the place for them. And, yeah, yeah rules wise I think, yeah. but I think aesthetics looking at mm. them, you, some some gamers that are more into the aesthetics playing brewers might not want them in a team so they don't look like the best. But. True, so cheers for the question Trent and we hope to hear from you in the next one. Uh, next question is from Matt Hart, hey. one of the two 
Uh, you're obviously there watching this, but the two men who take all our money that take the credit for this. But cheers for asking the game. question. But uh, his question: What are the top three things you must think about when moving a model? Uh, in your opinion, what time lunch is? <laughs> do, do I need the toilet? <laughs> and what time lunch is again? How many DPs has Chris got? <laughs> uh, okay, for me, I guess. Um, whether you're engaged, so part and blows, think about part and blows and what the opponent person has if you're going to move out of that range, whether mm -hmm. you're going to get knocked down. Um, when you're ending your movement, unpredictable movement, does the model you're going for have unpredictable movement? Yeah. That's going to screw you up. Yeah. And then for me, finally, things that catch me out a lot, bricks, counter charge or whatever. Tenderizers. And rush keeper, well, yeah. those sort of things. Yeah, I suppose for me, it's very much, when you move one model, you, you I mean, once you've played X amount of games, I know I do and I know you do, you don't have, your game plan for the turn isn't one model, it's what everyone's going to do, so it's where do I need this model to be? Um, and then obviously the other key thing is do I want him to engage models to stop them or unengage them and things like that, but I think once you covered it pretty solid as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's good. What was, he th what was he talking technically in terms of action measuring and stuff? Did mm. But no, and, and it's, like, it's all about, like, like I say, it's about what is this model going to do? Do I need him to be, he's got a six inch kick and he's nine from the goal, so is he going to get, can he only get eight from the goal and he's going to have to use hits to dodge around? Or if he's going to make a pass or a shot, it's all about placement to make sure I'm not engaged or intervening models. Things like that are key when moving a model, but it's a good question. Yeah. Thanks for it. And make sure you ask another one next week. So next up, sorry guys, we're off the phone this week. We're recording in our potential new, we found ourselves a little city centre um, place to record. This, I'm a bit dubious about the sound. We'll have to see when we bit play echoey. the bass. A little bit echoey. Um, but we're in our new little place where we, because you work in the city centre, I travel through the city centre, so Just finding sense. this place makes it so much easier to film this for you guys. So we're trying that out today, but unfortunately we're on the phone and the phone keeps locking. So we'll, we'll repair the window on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> so next up it is Vitruvian Goblin. How you doing, bud? And he says, "Sup, fellas." Sup. Sup. So this is one half of the battle. Sup. Yeah. I'd, I'd say more of like a two thirds. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Just say no. Joking and joking. Uh, go check out the battle armor. Um, well done on another grand show. Thank you. Uh, he says, "Always a joy seeing your cherubic faces." Okay, show them. Me. He's talking about him, and then what the 12th, and then... So he says, so, on with the questions. Number one, what do you think is the most underrated character player trait? Let's answer that first. Um, Ooh, I've got a good one that I don't see used very often, it's concussion. Um, yeah, you I, don't, I, I think mean, because it has very high triggers on playbook. I think that can be massive, though. If you can trigger it off your playbook, yeah. taking that basically this uh, concussion is it takes an influence off whoever it is you're hitting. Yep. So you can sort of charge and hit somebody, get concussion off. I think Rage has it. And Boar. <coughs> does Black Heart might have it? Boar has it. No, I thought it was just Rage and Boar. Was it just Rage and Boar? You're, you're the Black Heart guy, you know that. Yeah, he's got Misdirection, which is a similar sort of ability, but... Um, yeah, that's one. Um, and that, that's one, the reason that I say that, and that it's in the forefront of my mind, is I've recently been playing Alchemists, and Midas, True replicating concussion is amazing because it's not once for a turn. Oh term. god, yeah. So he and he's got oh. two then it's a two killable symbol, so it's on three hits for him. So if he goes in and just concusses people, he can I, remove, he their, can remove he, their whole he, he can effectively be a captain for Captain Trade yeah. Office. Bang, 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 bang. Yeah, yeah, that's that's taken six or seven. Yeah, that's good. Uh, others. I think very much like I, I've been thinking about um, obviously now I've got my engineers back and I'm looking at them. Like I've been looking at hoist with true replicate. And obviously, it's because of the way Midas did it, it's very much siding blow, where they go, da da da. But I've been looking at the little things like smelling salts. And, and mm. Blind isn't an underrated one, blind's amazing, everyone knows that. But I think just little things like smelling salts and like, other stuff like the buff, like single singled out. out. Singled out, yeah, singled out's huge. And especially if, I mean, it's, it's good where, it, where they are now, like Mallet and Alvis and Greed. But their teams that benefit that benefit a little from that. Imagine putting that in like a union team, like a oh God, yeah. the, yeah. the teams that don't usually have single art. Mm. So, so yeah, like there's a couple. Uh, let us know anyone who's watching what you think are underrated. Is single art just from an attack or is it from character because you get extra it's just attack of Yes it is, yeah. <clears throat> so question two. Short of annoying football chants, are there any songs? Who are you? Who are you? 
So you'll sing that, but not the Battle Hammer song. So, are there any chat? Are there any songs, bands, musical styles that give you a Guildhall vibe, or any that suit particular teams? Brackets, kick it in the goals. So, before we go any further, since it's Christmas and they've asked for it week upon week, I think you should sing. In its entire, the hat's going backwards. He's going Fred Durst for this. I think you should sing. I don't know what it is though. You're a liar. I don't know what it is. You gotta sing with me. I tried, guys. You sing with me. No, 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 no. I'll finish. No, that's not what this is about. It's something like. Uh, who's got Lair's goal, Kick it in the goal, My goal, Gold's goal, Anyone's oh, goal. I tried. We're, 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 ooh, ooh. Yeah, sorry about that. I think he's had too much coffee. Um, I'll tell it for you. I think very much um, like folk style music suits Guildport. Do you know in my head I picture like folky like harps, not harps, like think The Guildport's night music's really good. Yes, yes, That's very good. I'm trying to I'm trying to like get words for the type of music. Really like folky old like played in like I'm thinking uh, kinda of, but what like music Irish, what Irish. music yeah exactly yeah stuff like that. Um yeah, something like that. And, and obviously things like like bags, and stuff for the Brewers. The Brewers yeah. Like what, is, what, what music? for well, the, the butchers are just straight up death. Well, I've been listening to Imagine death Dragons. Man. Imagine Dragons, and they have a song called Bleeding Out, which is amazing for butchers that do lots of uh, damage and bleed. I think that's really cool. That gets me in a bit of a slashing face. Fish. Um, <laughs> fish. Um, in the name. <laughs> 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 yeah, something like that. Um, so yeah, and then we have to hang on. Where are you? Going on. And then he says, question three: How do you reckon Rage became the new Union captain, and what do you see his new card being like? Keep up the good work, and may you have the merriest of Christmases. Big hugs. Well, I hope you also have the best of Christmases and big big hugs. And we're going to catch up in the new year, aren't we? Yeah. If not, at another event, hopefully ours or they they might run the they next frozen balls. I might not be yet. Yeah. I'm still on the waiting list, but I think I think they're going to pop up. Yeah, so we'll definitely see. Um, I reckon Rage became the Union captain by taking his cleaver and stabbing it in Blackheart's head. Well, I, know. I reckon he was a uh, sh- sh- gutter on the side. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and it became a vicious love triangle. But, and I, uh, the rom com is coming next year for that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And we don't know anything about the, mm. the late, the next fluff for season two. However. Listening to the latest Guildhall tonight, they had Sherwin on, who writes the stuff. I've not had time to listen to And him. he talked a lot about deaths and fatalities, and I think he let slip in there that mm. Blackheart dies. Mm. Um, so, how does he must die? He's um, not going to go down. He's like King Pirate, he's not going to go down without a fight. But cheers for the question, bud, and we hope to speak to you in the new year, my man. Have a good Christmas. So, we've got Matt Hart on again. So, question If when you cried, your tears were a popular soft drink, what drink would it be? Uh, iron brew, just because it feels like a manly drink, just to balance the fact that I'm sap blubbering like a girl, it could like even things out a little bit. Iron brew, we've got spectators, <laughs> we're famous. Uh, yeah, I reckon iron brew, what do you reckon? Uh, Dr Pepper for me, it's you, the you drink would. of kings. I'm on I would, Pepsi today, but I would, it's because Chris did a drink run. I would cry Dr Pepper and I'd sneeze skills. Right, and I'd be, I'd be the happiest thing. Get ever. wedged in I your love nose. Them. I love, I love skills. The sour yeah. skills. You'd get wedged in your nose. They wouldn't, then you could like. <laughs> yeah, this is all on camera. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah. This is not what I do at home every evening. Mm. I do love a skill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so why? Why don't you run off an iron grip? Just just feel more manly. I can manly drink. So I'm sat crying. Although I cry a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Can, can I mean, being a dad did that to me. Since I had Oscar. Oscar's in my son, by the way. I literally cry once a week like, at, at the most stupid things. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Like, like anything. I don't know. Like the news and stuff. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Seeing you. Would that you usually brings me to tears. Tears of joy. This conversation. <laughs> would, you, would you not like to cry something useful like, like petrol? It, it's a soft drink. Remember the question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I think that pe- burnt petrol. Yes, let's a cry. Petrol. That was a soft. Soft drink. Dr Pepper and Iron Bird. Oh, as always, I can only apologise for Chris. Uh, cheers again for the second question, Matt. Uh, I'll do the next one then. From Tao Dark. Tao Dark. Uh, thanks for the question. With the knowledge that we will have Rage as the new Union captain, this seems to be all the rage now. Oh me. God! Um, You've been preparing. Do you that, think you? there will be some sort of player restriction that prevents Rage the captain in the same team as Rage the midfielder? So straight off the bat, yes, there is. A mil- I think um, almost a million percent. So you can't. You, as far as we're aware, you can't. Well, we do know that 
uh, they've said, Steve Voss have said, any season two veteran players can't be used in the same team as their original season one. So if you take season two rage, you can't take season one rage. You um, love being in the I love, team yeah, rage. I just have you are team rage, 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 Harry the Hat. Team Hat. Done. Uh, Jamie Giblin sent me a picture the other day and that was all his with hats because he's got like who, um, Hooper. Has he got a He had Avarice, yeah. Um, oh, I think he had four out of six of his team with the hats. Someone should, I told him you should model hats on the rest of it. So thanks for the question, Tal. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next up, Ian Marley. The Lord mm. himself, Ian Marley. Uh, how are you doing, buddy? He says, theory master, misuse of the word master, will make a fool of one of us. That is probably true, and I think I know who it will make a fool of. Anyway, he says, I have played more on battle with the engineers. I have failed with him so much that it's depressing. Anyway, question. What is your favourite legendary play and why? I might as well carry on. Mine is Obulus's because momentum wins games and you are also and you also are denying your opponent healing and condition removal and whatnot. Also I okay, let's let's call it there because he's got a second question. What is your favourite legendary play? Ooh, so we've got a uh, lot. Uh, Black Harm. Well, we've got nine, haven't we? There's the eight captains, and then you've got Cassidy. Cassidy time. Uh, although uh, the Brewers captain doesn't have a legendary, he's got his work. Okay, so you've got eight. Um, although. As Old a, James. I if, that was, if that was a legendary, I may pick that. Old oh, James, to be fair, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a bit better than a Lyric because you do every turn. Mm. An extra two. Oh, of course it's better than a Lyric. Even if it was a legendary, it'd still be one of my favourites. Um, um, I don't think fish. I mean, minus four move is great. Oh, that is good. Um, um, puppet, puppet. No, not puppet master. Um, um, what's the word for populuses? Yeah, the that take thing. your momentum. That that because it, 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 it literally like like Ian says, it stops them uh, removing conditions, healing, etc. But it can pretty much guarantee you the the, the, initiative. Going the initiative next turn, and then Obulus can have eight, and he can do pretty much what he wants. With it. If he wants to do something with his eight influence, he's usually going to pull it off. Um, Black Heart can do a two inch dodge or plus yeah, one defense. Right. It's handy. Plus one defense yeah. for the whole game. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's handy, but it's not game changing. Um, Heart yeah. Honors is plus one influence. influence. It's six inch range. What's the range on Honors? Yeah. It's not eight. I think it, it might be four. Honest is good. Um, I like oxes as well. Being a plus two damage, and minus, minus one, one armor. armor. That's it's pretty good. But I think obulus. I think we'll go. Obulus. I really rate minuses as well. Like, it, and there is a debate about which way is the right way to use minuses and all that. But I, I do like that minuses because you can come out of minus and come out with like seven, eight MP, including his legendary. And, and you can start a turn with him with no momentum with the ball and even score. So yes, he, can ju- he generates, yeah, minus. But I think, I think Obvious pips it because it's a similar sort of ability messing with momentum, but with Obvious it's infinite. You could get six, seven, eight yep. momentum from it and you're taking it off your other team, so we'll go Obvious. And then my second question, if you use Honor's topping out legendary trait, can you take a player above their capped allocated influence? Yes, yes. you can. So there's been, a, there's been a clarification on the forums, I think it is, where the wording of um, allocate and gain, I think. Um, so if you, you when you allocate influence to somebody, you can't take them above. Yeah, because it's their the maximum thing. allocation. But yeah. when you when when the ability says gain, that can take it. So there's a couple that you can do it with. So basically, it means that I think. Um, what else can do it? Tappers. Tappers is is, is a allocate, so you yeah. can't do it to get above your max, but you can. Use, once you've spent once momentum, you, spend it, you, you can, can put it back in the pot. Yeah. Coins, you can go over, so Gutter can have five influence. Um, and honest you can. Yeah. So, yeah. So, cheers for the question, Ian, and I hope to speak to you again next week. Have a good crib, old bud. Next one is uh, Phil from Guildhall tonight. Uh, hello, mate. Um, how tempted are you to do home and away versions of your teams? <laughs> <laughs> We've just talked about this. I, I did actually have a quick look at this question uh, today. You did a home and away version of your fisherman. And what happened? Uh, somebody stole my home team. Well, so, I, I thought, why does he have two painted teams of one guild and I don't? So I was like, money's team, yay. So if you have a look on the uh, Guild Ball forums, on the uh, display, CD head by the sea, head by the sea is my original hobby. Uh, blog and I've got fishermen painted the traditional home kit of blue greens and then I did an away kit with the kick with the Kickstarter 
um, shark, and they were white. Yeah, they were like, they, were like they had like snow bases, like they were in the winter. Yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah, it was good. They look good. I've got the original. I got your effectively home yeah. team, but it is a good idea. Um, I am like that close to having every model painted. Like James has just finished. And then would you go away to this? Would you start again? Probably, probably. Yeah, probably. With all the kickstart, with all the alternate captains. Mm, I'd probably do the captains just because I'm an idiot and addicted to toys. <laughs> but um, like. I think, yeah, probably. No, yeah, probably. I think, well, I think for, for me, the appeal was just that when I first started playing, the fishermen were quite popular. I think, I, yeah, I like the idea I think what you see more than home and away teams is people painting. No, yeah, well, obviously, yeah, because like, people will paint them anything they want. But the main thing I think you see is people painting, having multiple union models of the same model painted to match the guilds they're using with. Another one you're a bit fan of. I've like, got three fan teams. Yeah, <laughs> Jamie Giblin's done all of, he's got a lot of the union players already, but he's done all of the available Brewers union members in the same kit. You see a lot of that as well, That's which cool. is very cool. One of my plans is still from George, and I've seen a few other people say they're going to do it, is I want to get all the engineers union players with like limbs, yeah, like yeah. wooden limbs. Like I've got a spare velocity and a spare hoist set with James, who's done my engineers, and at one point I'm going to go, here's the union that can play for engineers. Repaint them in engineer colours and I'd change random oh, limbs. You can have you can have rage. You can cut Rage's head off and have like a velocity head and then put a new hat on. That'd be cool. That would be cool. So <laughs> that would be cool. So yeah. cheers for the question, Phil. Uh, me next up, we've got Peter O'Sullivan. Thanks for asking a question, Peter. It is very much appreciated. I uh, hope you're enjoying the show. And he says, do you think it worth getting several player activations to set up one player with damage buffs, or do you think you're putting all your eggs in one basket? In doing so, your opponent your opponent has time to cancel that player. Um, I do think um, focusing damage is key to success. Um, and yes, I do think buffs are the way to go. Um, if you can set them up, obviously it's very situational. If you see that using model A to go and put maybe knock down or mark target a model is going to get that model killed it's probably not worth it if it can do it and stay in safety so you can guarantee that the next model will take that one out in one activation because that's what you want really the key to success is one model like takeouts of a player if you can do it in one activation that's when you're going to be very successful across the game but yeah i am and the more i play the more i'm realizing the power of buffs yeah like ian marley was telling me uh, um Winter Wreath, the Who Cares Who Wins, when it all costs um, tournament. He was saying, like, obviously, Ian's only played two or three games in the flesh, like Devils. He's playing a lot on Vassal, and his first two games, he just had his pants pulled down by Command in Aura, because he'd just not experienced it before. And, but yeah, I think buffs are very much the way to go. What about you? Um, I've kind of gone full circle on this. I used to be a very big fan of, yeah, spending three or four activations setting up a gutter strike at the end of the turn with as many people crowding out the person I'm hitting and as many commanding all singled out up to get the side the siding blow off. Uh, but it I've come undone so many times doing that from from somebody moving my models about or just the amount of time it takes to set up. So I'm a bit keener now to only have uh, sort of two perhaps three sort of set up activations. Yeah, you know, I would I wouldn't from. invest like more than two prior no. and they wouldn't be it them doing something to a model for somebody else wouldn't be its sole purpose it would do it in like for example fancy loves to go in and knock multiple people down or avarice will go in and single out multiple people i sometimes single out and knock down a model and then follow it up on someone else but that yeah that like you said that's sort of generating new momentum as well it's not just the fact that you're saying yeah. for somebody else you're doing yeah. it's, it's there's a point to it as mm. well yeah. So that if it all does fall down, it's still been worthwhile. So but, yeah, I think I think to, the really good players at uh, Guildhall now they do set up these sort of one-two hits yeah. for people. It's not just you just want a model to hit somebody. Yeah. They've had people crowding out or ganging up on them, sorry, yeah. and singling out. So yeah, I think they are key. Uh, next, so thanks for the question, Peter. Next up is Andrew Masora. Thank you for asking the question, bud. Uh, great show, folks. He really likes Casket, but finds it difficult to fit him in any inner team. Any thoughts on how to use him? Well, do you know what? I can, I can sympathise with this. I, I'm sort of the same. I love Casket. I uh, still think he's got a very solid place in the team. I mean, Casket time. Casket time alone, um, granted, it, it, was, it did suffer 
slightly at the hands of the errata, but it's still very, very useful and game-changing. And another key thing about him that maybe goes overlooked a little bit is the rough ground. Yeah. Like, that can be used just as such a good stopping tool and to help pin people in place that he's really good. And if he can hold them there, someone can come in and do the damage. If he finishes them off the casket time, he's good. I think at the moment he's seeing a lot more gassed. Than yeah. than casket. And, and we can see why to a point because Gast is just such a brilliant player. Gast is amazing. Um, but there's definitely a place and a play style for him. Um, Your yeah. thoughts? Uh, You've now, used a bit of Malticians recently. Yeah, now I've um, played Fanting for more as well. Uh, that, that area of effect of rough ground is really, really good. Um, for Casket, I think some people, what people often overlook, especially people I've seen play Casket, they, I think they play him too aggressively. For me, he's a big guy, um, but he is quite squishy if you start hitting him. And um, I kind of see him not to be in the front. I see him as like a follow-up model after somebody else like Gast has run in and pinned somebody down. Mm. He's a second or third model in. Yep. Also, he has an ability that people don't often use, which uh, drops an area of effect, and it means that anybody charging them loses tack or something, or loses distance when they charge. Yes. I can't remember exactly yeah, what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's like a smoke screen or a yeah. something <clears> like that. So I would use him early game, yeah. just putting that like on Gast or on, on Obulus to stop people attacking them, and then he goes in after that. The other the other combo, Rage can play for um, Morticians, yeah. and the other thing that people often forget is because Rage is a Maverick, he ignores um, the rough ground foul odor. So he's so he perfect three, three. Yeah. for sending, um, sending him in first, and then Rage comes in afterwards. Yeah, if you see like Fangtooth, you normally know, see Rage still yeah. So those are one, two, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. that might be get some use. So I hope that's helped, bud. Um, let us know your thoughts on that next week. Ask another question. Next up, we have Steve Newton. It looks like he has actually posted his questions <laughs> after all. Uh, why don't you give a cut off point for asking questions so people don't waste their time asking them after you film? Well, we took that on board because he did rant at us about that as well, and we've done that. We did that this week. We did, we posted up on the Facebook. Was it yesterday or was it Monday? Uh, Monday, I think. So we posted up on Monday to give you all advance warning. And why have you stolen our friend of the show, Catchphrase? Uh, prove it, you'll be hearing from our lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you've got a badge yeah. doesn't mean it's yours. That's it. Psh. Turn your screen save off. My screen keeps locking. So, no joking aside, cheers, Steve. We appreciate you asking questions. So, who have we got next, bud? Um, are we on? So, Trinity, Trinity Wargamers. Um, if Steamforge were to bring out a new mat, Guildboard Gaming mat, what would you want it to look like and what would you want to see them do? Mm. So they've got uh, Proving Grounds, which is like the demo one, which has yeah. got uh, wood around the outside, and then there's the, just the traditional... So that's, that's tough for me, because as much as I really appreciate what the Proving Grounds might help you do, which is it gives you a 3v3 pitch and it gives you a 2v2 for demos, yeah, I'm not okay. a fan. I, li I, I like my grass pitch. I'm quite traditional in that. I like the grass pitch. I mean... Um, what would you like to see? Okay. I'd like to see a fisherman one with a few like with a few like rivers or something that are fast ground or some bogs that are. I was about to say, but I, I retract it. But I'll say it anyway. Uh, one with terrain on, but it would get very samey playing on that board. Um, maybe a cobblestone like a street one yeah. played like in the free cities and the towns That's and stuff. Cool. But you could put cool. some buildings in. Yeah, I'd like to see. You'd have to have terrain that matched it as well, would you? Plastic terrain set. Yeah. A bombshell. We yeah, found yeah, out yeah, in yeah. the Christmas uh, message that we're getting a plastic top, which is well cool because that that light is a breath because you know like uh, like the, the events I've run. Unfortunately, I've managed to lose some of my terrain. And uh, as much as I love the stuff I'm using, it's quite expensive. So plastic terrain set made me a little bit giddy. Um, can't wait for that. And then all the official sizes for tournaments. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's there's no but what about you? What would you like to see then? Cobblestone maybe? Uh, yeah, or just a fish one, or maybe like a, a mortician graveyard style. Yeah, that would be cool. I think you'd have to avoid aiming it at obviously one guild because it would limit sales, wouldn't it? Yeah, uh, unless they bring one. Well, no, quite a creepy one would look, would look good. A map for everything. Well, just, just you know what? I pray to God they don't do that because I'll buy them all. Yeah, with a logo in the middle. Yeah, I don't want to spend like X amount of money on nine mats when I can only use one at a time. I've already got well, one, but I don't like the Proving Grounds one. And stands down the side yeah. with, with the crowd on, the plastic today. Do you know I found a company online? I think I was on Sally Forth's website, and they uh, they sell stuff for everybody. And you can buy bleachers. And I was like, oh, how am I going to be that? 
I actually did, like I, yeah, I do, do you know when I first got into Guild Ball and I came with the idea of um, the YouTube channel stuff? One thing I wanted to do a concept to the blog called Alex Wright in America, and he's um, part of the Hobbit community, and he's, he's actually part of the DCHL, which is the Washington Hobbit League, and he, he, he's got a company, search for Wright War Game Terrain on Facebook, and I contacted him to make me a Guild Ball Stadium, and we got the plans where I met, like, epic, it had working lights, it had big billboards with save on, like, the designs were beautiful, and do you know what, the price was amazing, but do you know what stopped it? It was the shipping. Like this thing, it was costing effectively the same in shipping than it was, and the price for the actual unit was amazing for what it was. So, but I couldn't do it, and that, that always made me sad because so that would have been such a cool thing to have. If there's anyone in the UK that makes today, get in touch. Yeah, if, if anyone is on a terrain maker and fancies making Guild Ball in former stadium, that would be epic. Pitch. Yeah, we can, we can put it in the dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> it would be amazing. Sponsored by Purcell. Yeah, <laughs> it would be amazing. But, it's all whitewash. Yeah. So anyway, cheers for the question, Trinity Wargamers. Uh, next up we've got Paul Waters. Uh, thanks for asking a question. But... So he's a pundit from Hastings. Down oh, from 1066. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm running an event in Mid for Mid Sussex Wargamers at the end of Jan. I believe some of these guys are coming down. Hopefully you are, Paul. Um, and he says, question one. Oh, I'll the screen. Question one. Now that we know that Rage will be getting a promotion to captain, <coughs> I see you will. What other players would you like to see promoted? For anyone who hasn't watched it, I think it was Matt Hart's Twitter, wasn't it? Yeah. He, he must have been in a very good mood, so we posted some pictures of the season two captains. Who did we see? We, we saw uh, we saw a picture of Rage, Esther's. picture of Esther's, the new Brewer Bird, and we saw uh, a the I new think. fish dog. How cool do they look? Very very nice amazing, yeah. Rage is epic. I like. I actually like the static pose. I really like the sort of... Oh, yeah. yeah, it's cool. Has he got a different hat? That's one thing. Uh, uh yeah, I think it's bigger. Bigger. Yeah. bigger and there's a trench Season twelve, it's gonna be like. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so um. So who's gonna be promoted? What other players would you like to see promoted? Well, we, we we talked about this, and we are um. So we talked looking about at the fluff thing. as well. I always thought Silence is gonna do obulus in. This is a serious power struggle in the yeah. positions. So silence was one. So who who else in the current? Let's go through the team very quickly. Okay. Who in the current team would make a good captain in future seasons? So no, I will, it's who would you like to see promoted? Promoted, yeah. Okay, so so, so fish of the current lineup. So current season one. Right? Salt. Salt. Captain Salt. Captain Salt. My like eye patch hook. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> the dodgy uh, pirate impression. Um, Brewers. Um, Friday. You know what? She 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 needs credit for handling all them stupid drunken idiots yeah. all the time. You can see Friday. Yeah. Captain Friday. Friday. Captain Friday. She's in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we digress. Butchers. Um, Shank's awesome. Shank, Shank, Shank is the big daddy. I love Shank. He's probably one of my favourite pure butcher players. Oh, let's be honest. <laughs> all female captains. Alchemists. Um, um, someone that's not as selfish. Now, Vitriol's amazing. Vitriol is okay. calling it the best non captain player in the game by right. eight miles. Um, yeah, so there's a few for you anyway. Um, engineers as well, like I said about the silence one. In the engineers, I, and it may happen one day, we don't know. I expect Salvo because I know I bang on about engineers a lot. Obviously, like Salvo's sister died and they built. Uh, Christmas and then they built Velocity as like a memorial to her and, I'll, and I reckon one day Salvo is going to, because it was something went wrong yeah. and I reckon one day Salvo is going to blame Ballista yeah, instead of like mourning with him and just doing it. Yeah. Captain Salvo. <laughs> uh, question two, do you think we will see any players switch guilds in season two? Now in the early days this was hinted at wasn't it? By Matt, I think, or Rich. I'm sure we've heard this like a long time ago. It rings faint bells. To me, um, yeah, I do. Um, there's, I mean, there's always a, there's an undertone. I, don't, I think if a player switches, it won't take its profile with him. It will probably yeah, tweak. Yeah. Yeah, I think you may see veteran players in sort of season three or onwards that have switched, maybe switched guilds would be cool. Yeah. Uh, the obvious ones are depending on what happens with Ox. I mean, Ox and mm. Jack are hinted at being brothers, aren't they? In the fluff. Is it? I thought it was Boar and Jack. No, I thought it was Ox. 
Jeg har hørt det også før, du så han på ja, okay. en i en show interview som han sagde, as well på Paul and Jack and Brothers or something. Uh, so that was on the, I need to listen to that. Yeah, that's cool. We don't know. Then they, um, but yeah, I do think you're going to see it, and I think it would be quite cool because you could. Some players do look like they'd suit other guilds. Well, you were saying just before the corsair looks a bit like a brewer. Yeah, like so just just the aesthetic of him. He doesn't look like a fish. He's like ridiculously <laughs> built. Like all those brewers are like nine foot tall. They're all monsters. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that'd be interesting to see. And I hope they do because it'd be fun. In the fluff, there's that undertone with um, with Simon and Kraken and is it Mist? I don't know that. Where one. they like uh, Mist and Simon like have got they're both unknowns and they're both mm. like a bit mysterious. Whether they're like brother person. and sister or Could the, the same, same person. person. Oh. The cool as well if you see union members become part of the guild. Like, like pure guild. Yeah, actually yeah, taking the guild. That would be good. So, cheers, we've got that's some good questions, Paul. Thank you. Uh, speak to you next week. Uh, so, it's Tal Dark again. Another question from you. Um, though the rule book says just get the consent of your opponent, what would be a standard terrain setup for a game? Size of each piece, quantity, placement on a mat, um, on the outer edges, etc. So, cool. So, um, the organised play document says between three and seven pieces, if I remember correct. Um, all the sizes of terrain are in there, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, 50% have to be obstacles on the board, and then um, placement wise, I think rough can't be within six of the goal token or the center, and the pass has edge. to be completely within six of an okay. edge. Um, some of that may be slightly wrong, don't quote me, it's been a while since I've read the. But they are there, you need to look at totally wise. Yeah, just pop on the Guildhall website and in the download section, just get the newest version of the organized play document, and there is actually a section on. Sizes and placement. For friendly games, I my tend to set up is two rough, one fast, and three obstacles. To be honest, that tends to be the way I do it at tournaments. Six per table. Um, If I've got terrain left over after that game, ridiculous and putting forests on because they confuse (laughs) everyone, and I don't have to play them. It's fine. (laughs) So cheers for the two questions actually, but much appreciated. And next up, we have Pat Giles. Pat, what's your question, Pat? He says, First, awesome show. Well, thank you, but we're glad you're enjoying it. That is why we're making it. Yeah. Yeah. He says, I just recently got into Guild Ball. Excellent choice. So I am still very green, but I am no stranger to tabletop miniature games. Oh, I've actually spoke to this guy. We've we've been, I think we've been messaging each other. He's a very nice book. Um, But I am no stranger to tabletop miniature games. Also, you guys are right. This show is perfect for hobby time. I was able to make all paper dolls so I can teach my friends how to play. So good stuff for watching and good stuff for making paper dolls yeah. to teach other people. Yeah, That's what we like, spreading the guild ball love. He says, I would like to see something on the show geared for newer players. Well, uh, let's read the rest of this. He says, like an advice or a tips and tricks with either a whole team or a particular model or a good combo of models, maybe call it on the ball, off the pitch. Nice. Uh, basically like a coaching strategy to give more ideas to new players to use their models more efficiently. So, um, regarding... Um, strategies and stuff in particular models, check out the Meet the series. We've covered most of the teams. Uh, Alchemist will be up within the next week and then we'll probably just finish off the ones that are missing. Yeah. Um, and then regarding um, sort of a segment for uh, beginner players, we actually have something planned called Guild Ball 101. Uh, we've got sort of what we want to do outlined for maybe 10 episodes. One will cover movement, one will cover the, the cards, one will literally cover what you need to play. Yeah. Um, but they're very much in the planning stage. We need to figure out how we're going to film them to make them very user-friendly and really clear that. Like, if we were just sat here going token, ruler, model, it, it wouldn't really come across right. So we're going to figure out the best way to film it and then we're going to get them out because I think they'll be quite popular. To be yeah, honest. I think so. We'd have, we'll have like a playlist mm-hmm. on the channel uh, and they're all labelled so one will be like momentum and you can if you want to know more about that specifically you could just watch that video and it'll be all we've even got the title shots have you seen them in the dropbox for the first 10 episodes like austin did them because i'm useless at that stuff but that stuff will be coming soon and we hope you enjoy it it was plenty of feedback on anything and everything you watch so his next paragraph says so i love the fluff around guild ball so many side stories and shady dealings from behind the curtains so to speak i agree i think sherwin did a very good job yeah fantastic we need a book we need like a proper like separated just, instead of just character fluff just give us a book of guild ball antics that'd be cool um i would love i probably should have read the rest of this <laughs> i would love to see a comic book or animated movie slash show that would be epic to see our favorite models doing their players think they might try something like that. Do you think they try it? Did you see, um, going on a tangent, there was, um, ah, 
I'll try and um, think of it for the next um, episode, so sorry about this, but there's a, somebody's done a comic strip um, of, a, of a game they played. Oh, they, they've done, right. they filmed the game, and then they've done it like really comic oh, cool. pictures, and they've got like speech bubbles, like say, oh no, Ox has done his legendary, it's really? supposed to be and then Shank runs in, and it's got like pow, pow, ping, screenshots. Like, yeah. Proper, yeah. If anyone has seen that, who's watching, I'll try and find comment, it. post we'll it in the comments, so we can uh, have, have a look, look at that. That yeah. sounds really it's good. Wicked. It's really that sounds cool. Um, so there is one out there, and hopefully someone who's watching know maybe made it, 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 and we can get it in the comments. Um, as I really enjoyed the fluff and tried to stick to an all guild team, do you think with enough practice and now on could a guild only team do well in a competitive environment? Yes, very much. Yes. Uh, we did guild only at the Scaldic Shield. We did. Um, a lot of people have actually took Lash Union off the back of that. Yeah. And I think there are certain teams that suit pure guild better than others. The two for me that I think are the best pure guild teams are Brewers and Masons. Ooh. They're the two teams where I go, who can I like Putting somebody in from Union is always a big hit into those two teams for me. Butchers? Butchers? Yeah, yeah. Well, James is doing quite well. Um, if you go and check out Hotcakes Gaming on YouTube, he's doing a series called Avatar Away Days, and he's basically playing pure Butchers against pure every other guild. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play Brewers for that one. Nice. We're going to film that on the 28th. Nice. I need to learn how to play <laughs> Brewers so I can crush him. Um, but yeah, check that out as well. Another bit of Guild Ball resource for you there. and. Yeah, I definitely think if you if you put the time into your team, it's not essential. Season two will help as we keep banging on about. I think we think season two is really. We'll see a lot more pure teams going yeah. forward. So, um, yes. Let's see. In a tournament, have you ever thought to yourself, if I can just avoid blank filling the team you hate playing against, it should be an easy tournament. Gutter. Yeah, rather than team. Just gutter. Just avoid gutter. Yeah, gutter's still. If, if gutter can be in your team, she's still very much in your team at the moment. Um, no, for me, I don't think. I think that's why your was so good. Yeah, it's that's one of the reasons we love it. It's not like in in fantasy where you'd be like, if chaos, if I play chaos, I'm going to lose, or chaos always win, or whatever. Mm -hmm. That there's an OP team. I think whoever you come up against, it's always a good game. And then the beauty of it is as team. well, when you go to a tournament, you don't just bring your six little men that are going to be your team today. You bring eight or ten. Yeah. And the beauty of that is if you go, oh, I, I'm a football team, but he's a better football team. Out of those ten models you've brought, you can pick six, which maybe will lead more towards damage orientation or that doesn't play into the strengths of your opponent. So with that in mind, you, unless you make a effectively a rather big mistake in picking your team for that game, it's usually a very balanced game. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. I, um, I'm season two captains, I think will make a huge difference because like you just said, I could be alchemist and I could have Midas and Smoke in front of me and you have to pick your team based on that, who am I going to take? What does that mean you're yeah. going to take? And it's going to be amazing. Having split captains, yeah, it's going to be cool. yeah, it's cool. So for you, is there a team specific team that you don't like playing, that is kind of your bogey team? Mm. Is there one that you really think, oh, I can't do with Brewers? Brewers try. I think me. Brewers are the same for me, as, as purely... With as Brewers, I try and end the game in three turns, because once they get older, they just grind away. Like, I've played them with Fish a lot, and with footballing teams, you need to score those three goals very, very quickly, or you're going to struggle. Brewers for me are always a very tough matchup. I'm the same for Union. Uh, I feel like I can out momentum and I'll kill every team bar the Brewers. Even Butcher Even butchers, butchers, I feel yeah, like I can Brewers are beast when you right with all the heroics and stuff. Um, so yeah, and then next he says, um, since you guys are veteran players, <laughs> we're veteran players, I'm not. <laughs> I don't play. I try to. Um, I, do, I mean, I, in all seriousness, um, I think we do forget sometimes, not that we're particularly good players, but the knowledge that you have of, of other players and other teams. Yes. Um, and just knowing, like, oh, right, there's Mallet. Yeah. We kind of know what he can do. Yeah, if you've got a rough idea of his abilities, um, threat range, and things, it knowledge has power. Really that, like I always say with Gilbert, it's got a steep learning curve. You're going you're gonna to get into the game and have rage, just beat all six of your players to a pub. You're going to get into a game and have vitriol score three goals and win by first activation turn three. But it's like a learning yeah. curve, and, yeah. and it, it's a tough one compared to some miniature games, but you will get there. Um, so since you guys are veteran players, is there anything still surprise you when playing? I, oh wow, these two models would have, I never would have thought that, or have you guys pretty much seen it all? What was the last thing that made you go, oh, that's an obscene combination? Um, As I mentioned earlier for me, just putting avarice and greed into the brewers, yeah. just dishing out momentous singled out on one hit. 
Uh, yeah, um, and the most recent one for me was, was more of a rule, like more of a um, ability wise, is when I used to always trigger pushes, I used to always just naturally want to push the person away mm. and just think, oh, I'll push him one inch, push him two yeah, inches away. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I started thinking, absolutely, you can push him in any direction, let's push him back that way yep. to be engaged by two other than my models, no, or then let's be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's so that sometimes that surprised me. I think, oh, I didn't think about doing that. I never thought about that. Before. Yeah, I think the most recent oh wow moments are sort of with the new players that yeah. are coming in because you're seeing like like Venin for me, yeah. and it's like yeah, Mercury who? <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're seeing a lot of like new players coming in and going, oh, that's cool. So then he carries on. This is an epic question, which we. By the way, we do appreciate it. We like these questions. Yeah, we love these Feel questions. free to post as much as you want. So he says, so I noticed I printed out the paper dolls, engineers specifically. Good choice. Salvo's name is Velocity. Velocity's name is Talk, and Colossus's name is Walker. Were these test names? Um, I'm going to say yes, but yes. I, I don't know that as fact. They but I'm guessing yeah. maybe they were just early names of the models. They were, because I, when I first started Guild Wars, I got a bit confused because of that. I, I'd seen some earlier okay. stuff where names were different, especially mm. with engineers, and I was a bit like, oh, there, that used to be her, that used to be. So, yeah, I think in the in the play tests uh, earlier, they did have slightly different names, some of them. Well, the names have actually swapped. Mm. So, Velocity is now a different person. Um, so yeah, that was why. Um, if you could create, if you could create a character trait or play, what would you make? I made one. Wanted to know your thoughts. Too overpowered or kind of cheeky? <laughs> I bet it's dead up here. Okay. <laughs> so interceptor. If this model is within one inch of a kick from an enemy model, roll a dice, and on a five or a six, the ball snaps to this model. That's well cool. Yeah, that's well cool. I don't oh, well, insist but on it being it, a six. But not a five out of six. Yeah, because that's like one out of three. <laughs> if it's engaging the model that's receiving the ball, that would be cool. Can, that's cool because you 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 plant that on a def if a defensive model had that, and like with my engineers, uh, tip out a sending tips up for me, and like Colossus would be sat for snapshots. Yeah. Like you'd plant him there, and, and but I suppose it, it's a lot of investment for a model to to roll a six. Do you know to solve? But it's, so a, you're there, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely not overpowered. It's quite a cool rule. I mean, there's nothing like it as well, which I like. Um, yeah, I like that. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's really cool. Like sort of sweeper star models that. Matt Rich, if you'd like to buy that idea, uh, ten thousand uh, pounds. Filtered through Gilboy former agents. Yep, we will uh, manage yeah. this transaction and take our fee of ninety-five percent. So, <laughs> have you got any cool things that you'd like to? Do? Um. No. No. I've never really tried to design my own rules. That'd be quite cool. Do you know what I, I, I was saying? Um, I, one of my biggest regrets is not. I'd love to have been a character back then. Yeah. Oh my god! Even when Guildhall do a new IP, like I, I am character okay, backing, and like it's happening because it, see, it would be. I like Mike who cares about Midas. Like it'd be so cool to have to, to be able to use you. And, uh, and I think me and Phil in the early days on one of his first episodes ranting about them clearly should make a messenger's guild and it'd be like me and Phil and you but if only but character backing would be such a cool thing but I've never like designed a profile for myself have you? No. Ever thought of any rules would you be cool? Um, no not mm. really. Um, mm. Maybe we, for the next question ask another question Pat and we we'll, will think of a, we'll both think of a really cool rule. How's that? One for each other. You yeah. think of one for me, and I think of one for you. Deal. So, yeah. make sure you remind us by asking a question and we will plan uh, a rule for each other. And then, um, Pat's is actually the last question this week as well. And lastly, he says, thanks again for having this great show, and you guys have a fan from the States. Well, thanks for watching, but it does mean a lot when we get messages like that, doesn't it? It's why we're doing it. Yeah. Uh, and I hope Guild War becomes the best thing to happen since sliced bread. It already is the best thing to happen since sliced bread. And peanut butter. Do you like peanut butter? Yeah. No. Uh, my Jen likes peanut butter and it drives me insane. I can't stand it. Anyway, compliment right on side. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it, bud. And that brings us to the end of episode seven of On The Ball. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you're all doing some post-Christmas hobby time. Let us know what you're getting involved in. And please ask, always ask a question. So what have they got to do? Uh, comment, share, like and subscribe. And... and uh, the... the but, Happy gilballing, guys, and most importantly, have a very, very happy Christmas. And a happy new year. Take care, guys. Cheers.